So I got an email recently from a guitar student of mine who was freaking out about a guitar lick he was trying to learn to play and he described it as damn near unplayable. He showed me the tab for it and he said he was trying to get it to 140 BPM but he was stuck somewhere around the 50 BPM range so a pretty big gap there. And he wanted to know first of all what my top speed with this lick was and also what practicing tips I had or technique tips I had for him to speed this lick up from 50 to 140. And when I first looked at this lick I had the same exact question you probably have right now which is what the heck is so unplayable about this it looks completely normal looks like pretty straightforward diminished seventh arpeggios and 16th note triplets nothing really fancy that was until I picked up my guitar and actually tried to play it. Look at the tab you see on the screen right now. These two notes that I have circled are by far the hardest part of this entire lick. They make everything super awkward to play even slowly, much less try to speed the whole thing up to 140 BPM. <laughs> Right there, this jump is super awkward to make with the ring finger from the 19th fret of the G string to the 19th fret of the high E string. It's just super awkward to make this shift. And even if you're doing it with the pinky finger, so the ring finger is fretting the 19th fret, the pinky finger is fretting the high E string, you would think that solves the problem, but then you've got a picking hand issue because you're doing an upstroke on the G string and you have to skip over two strings to get to the high E string. That's super awkward to do fast. So after looking at this fingering and thinking about it for about two minutes, I replied back to my student and I said, my top speed with this lick is zero because I would never play it like this. This fingering makes no sense to me at all. It makes the lick much harder to play than it needs to be. And whoever transcribed this did not think this through at all. And I sent him the fingering of the slick that you see on the screen right now, which completely avoids the awkward jump with the fretting hand finger from the third string to the first string and bypasses the difficult string skipping motion your pig had to do as well. And it turned out like this. All of a sudden the lick felt a lot easier to play and he could speed this up a lot sooner. And what do you know, after just a few hours I get an excited email back from my student saying that he was freaking out again, only this time it's because he jumped from 50 BPM to 116 BPM by trying the new fingering on the lick that I sent him. So he was now much much closer to his goal in just a matter of a few hours. And there are two big lessons embedded here for your guitar playing in this little story. First of all, whenever you learn tab of any guitar solo from any online website, treat it like a politician's promise to treat the economy. It's probably bull****. Same goes, by the way, whenever you transcribe a solo by ear. The first fingering you stumble upon is probably not the best fingering either. You want to think it through a little bit more and you'll probably find an easier and more efficient way to play something. But the much bigger lesson here is this. Whenever you're playing something hard, the natural tendency is to mentally zoom in on that hard part, whether it's isolating the notes or just repeating something over and over and trying to play whatever it is you're trying to play just better or faster or cleaner or whatever. But sometimes you want to zoom out mentally and take a look at the bird's eye 30,000 foot overview of the big picture of everything you're trying to do with your playing. And whenever you're learning a lick that feels abnormally difficult to play, even at a slow tempo, like the example in this little story, it's a sign you've got to do the latter. What I mean by zooming out mentally and looking at the big picture is thinking beyond just the actual notes you're trying to play, but ask yourself questions like, Am I even using the best possible fingering here? Why am I starting this on a downstroke? Maybe an upstroke is better. Maybe I should start this lick with the middle finger instead of the index finger. Explore these little things you normally take for granted and you often will find clues or ways to approach a problem you never thought about before that make your playing feel easier. Other times you might approach something with a new hand position or focus on relaxing a part of your body like your feet for example that you normally just don't pay attention to because your feet are not involved in playing guitar but by zooming out and examining the big picture of everything that's happening, you can often find clues to why your playing feels harder than it should and you can take care of those problems. Whenever I talk about building speed on guitar, I often talk about practicing at your threshold of control. I've made videos about this topic on my channel before. But when you're practicing slowly, what you're trying to establish is what I call the threshold of ease. What I mean by that is you want the lick to feel ridiculously easy to play. Not just because you're playing it slowly, but because of the way it feels, how your hands are locking in sync, how consistent and reliable and accurate the picking hand motions are, how easily you can recall the fingering and it should feel super easy, consistent and reliable to the point where you can play this if somebody woke you up in the middle of the night, it feels super easy. You want to establish that baseline and then simply 
speed up that baseline. But in this particular example with the story with my student, that was not happening because he was practicing at a slow speed, 50 BPM, but the lick was feeling really hard for him. And that was a red flag in my mind that something was wrong with the big picture of what's happening here. And it wasn't just gonna be a matter of, here, hold your pick a little bit like this or a little bit like that that was gonna solve the problem. So whenever you're practicing guitar slowly, take advantage of the fact that there's zero pressure on you to play fast, really establish that threshold of ease we talked about, and then concentrate on what that feels like. Remember that feeling and make sure that feeling stays with you as you move up to the tempos. This is really, really important. It's a big key to improving your technique and making your playing feel consistent and reliable. And speaking of slow guitar practice and speed, did you know that you can build a lot of guitar speed without having to slow down or do the whole song and dance of starting slow and gradually build speed in small increments? Yep, there is a way to build speed without having to do that. And if you want, I can show it to you for free in my free video called Guitar guitar speed formula. You can check it out at the link in the description of this video or on the page on the screen right now. What it does is show you a new way to build guitar speed with zero slow practice involved. If you like the sound of that, click the link, enter your email address, I'll send you the video for free. If you like this video, hit the like button to let YouTube know you enjoyed it so it'll spread it out to other guitar players like you and they'll benefit from it the same way you did. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.